Hey friends, it's time to learn the cutest card drafter around. Of course, it's Sushi Go from Game Right Games. One, two, three, Sushi Go! Sushi Go Party is the deluxe version of the very popular Sushi Go card game, which includes a slew of new edible options. Whichever set you own will explain the rules to play either way. Setup for Sushi Go Party begins with the game board, play center. In Sushi Go Party, each player then selects a uniquely colored pawn and places it on the zero space of the score track. You'll then select from a menu of options from the rule book. After you've learned the core game, you can also customize these options. For Sushi Go, you'll get the original menu, so we'll use that as our example here. Place the menu tiles for each card type listed so all players can see. Nigiri, maki, tempura, sashimi, dumplings, chopsticks, wasabi, and pudding. Select those cards from the box. If you're playing Sushi Go Party, separate the dessert cards, in this case, Pudding into their own dessert deck. You're gonna set that off to one side of the board, then take the remaining cards and shuffle them all together into a common deck. Place that on the other side of the board. In original Sushi Go, you just shuffle all the cards together. Gameplay occurs over three rounds. During each round, players will be dealt a set of cards and may select one to keep, playing it into their personal scoring tableau right in front of them. Then they'll pass the remaining cards in their hands clockwise to the next player, and then they receive a new hand from the player to their right. The process repeats itself until all the cards are gone, ending the round. Depending on the cards in their area, players then score points. Follow the same steps for round two, except this time you will pass your hand counterclockwise. Reverse direction again for round three. At the end of the third round, the player with the most points wins. To begin a round, pick a dealer who then shuffles a number of dessert cards into that common deck. The number depends on the player count and the round number seen here. Then, depending on the player count, deal a number of cards to each player. As we're playing with five, we deal nine cards to each person. Gameplay occurs in turns. Each player examines their hands, selects one card to keep, and places it face down in their play area. Once all players have selected and placed their card, everyone flips them simultaneously. You also should probably yell, one, two, three, sushi go, but that's a house rule, take it or leave it. These cards will remain in play until they are scored at the end of the round. Players then pass their hands clockwise and begin a new turn by selecting and simultaneously flipping a card from the new hand. As players acquire more cards, they should group them by type, or OCD players like me will be very upset. Also, each player's previously played cards are public knowledge. The round ends once all cards have been played. Before round scoring, players set aside their dessert cards for now. They're always scored at the end of the game. Players now score their points going one at a time, then moving their pawns along the score track. After all points have been scored, place cards from round one into a discard pile. Remember when you're starting a new round to shuffle in a new number of dessert cards based on this table. This one. Don't forget this. Now that's if you're playing with Sushi Go Party. You're gonna use the same cards from round one and round two. If you're playing original Sushi Go, you're never going to need to shuffle. You're going to put everything into a discard pile at the end of each round. Let's look at the cards on our menu. Nigiri. This staple of any sushi outing scores points at the end of the round based on its type. One point for egg, two for salmon, or three for squid. Straight up points, easy, like fish on rice. Maki rolls award points for the number of total Maki icons on all of a player's Maki cards for that round. The player with the most, or tied for most, scores six points. The player with the second most Maki scores three points. A player must have at least one Maki roll to get points. Also, in a six to eight player game, this drops to four and two points respectively. So tasty though. Tempura. You want to eat these in pairs. If a player has one tempura at the end of the round, they score zero points for that card. However, if they have two tempura, they score five points. Players can score multiple sets of tempura in the same round. Sashimi. If a player has one or two sashimi, they score zero points for those cards. But if they have three sashimi, they score 10 points. 
Players may score multiple sets of sashimi in a round as well. Dumplings are exponentially delicious. They're worth points based on the total number of dumplings a player has collected that round. So get as many as you can for maximum pointage. Chopsticks are a special card that do nothing when played, but give a player a bonus action on a future turn within that round. So if you already have chopsticks in your tableau, on a future turn you play a card, then when revealing you yell chopsticks. Put the chopsticks card back into your hand and play an additional card from your hand into the play area. Now that the chopsticks are back in the hand, it's the correct number of cards for the next player. Any unused chopsticks are worth zero points at the end of the round. I don't wanna get stuck with them. Wasabi is another special card that does nothing when played alone, but the next nigiri card played in the round must be placed on top of the wasabi. The wasabi then triples that nigiri's score at the end of the round. Each wasabi card can only have one nigiri on top of it, and it must be the next nigiri played. So try and save and time that squid nigiri just right. Nine points, baby. Saving the best for last, pudding is a dessert card that will be scored at the end of the three rounds. The player or players with the most pudding cards will score six points each, while the player with the least pudding cards loses six points. In a two-player game, the player with the least pudding cards doesn't lose points, they just get zero. The Sushi Go Party set includes many other menus and single cards to add lots of variety to your games. For example, trade in some edamame for your dumplings or uh, maybe some green tea ice cream instead of that pudding. At the end of the third round, desserts are scored and the player with the most points wins. If there's a tie, the player with the most dessert card wins, because dessert is always the winner here. Thanks for watching this video. We've got a lot more coming at you from Good Time Society. And if you want to support us, you can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash goodtimesociety. We'll see you over there.